Welcome to Book Summaries, where knowledge and wealth building secrets are shared without limits. Is there anyone here who does not want to have a wealthy and financially comfortable life? That is, someone who desires a simple life, in a humble home, with a heart full of gold. Please leave your comments below. Yes, most of us wish to have plenty of money to enjoy a comfortable and affluent life. However, working hard alone does not necessarily make you rich quickly. There are many people earning a high income of 30 million, even 50 million per month, but they can barely cover their monthly expenses, and some even spend more than their salary. Meanwhile, there are many people whose monthly salary is only 7 to 10 million, but they still manage to save money in the bank and even have money to invest for profit. So, what is the difference here in the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad? Robert Kiyosaki writes that most people don't realize that in life, it's not important how much money you make, but how much money you keep. This demonstrates that how you spend your money determines your financial ability in the future. According to a study, on average, we spend 70% of our annual income on three expenses, housing, transportation, and food. Therefore, if you can cut these costs, you will save a lot of money. So, how can you reasonably reduce these expenses while still ensuring your quality of life? It's simple. These basic costs are liabilities among the total assets we own, so we can completely eliminate them easily using the following methods. Before diving into the content, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share to support the channel. Thank you very much. Lesson number one, regarding transportation issues, you might not have thought about these costs. If you take a taxi or motorbike taxi to work every day, the approximate cost for one trip is 30,000 Vietnamese dongs. Each day you take two trips, to and from work, which costs you 60,000 Vietnamese dongs per day. Multiplied by 30 days in a month, the total amount you spend is 1.8 million Vietnamese dongs, not including the times you go to meet partners or go shopping. On the other hand, if you use your motorbike to commute, you will only spend 300,000 Vietnamese dongs on gas each month, and if you use the bus, you will only spend 200,000 Vietnamese dongs each month. Clearly, you can save between 1.5 to 1.6 million Vietnamese dongs on transportation costs. You save for many years to accumulate a sum of money, but just because you like a new model of car, you are willing to spend all that money, and even borrow more, to buy it. The purpose is to satisfy your desire for ownership or to show off to friends. Many people, including those with low incomes, fall into this problem, causing their lives to be stuck in a vicious cycle of debt, never being able to save money. The habit of impulsively buying things you like is very dangerous. It is only suitable for those who are wealthy and financially free. My advice for you in this matter is to view vehicles merely as a means of transportation, a tool to help you work and make money. Therefore, choose a vehicle that fits your situation and budget. Don't let it become your master, forcing you to work tirelessly every month just to support it. It would be highly unreasonable if your income is only 10 million Vietnamese dongs, yet you go on vacation four or five times a year. I know you might argue that youth is a time to travel and explore the world. This is absolutely true, but you also need to consider that these trips shouldn't leave you with debt. Ideally, with that income level, you should only travel once a year, at most twice, and not exceed this number unless you can increase your income. The wisest approach is to save and invest that money. Later, when your wealth has grown, you can travel freely without having to worry about money. Lesson number two, regarding housing issues. There is a saying I want to share with you. It's foolish to exhaust all your resources to buy a house at 30. 
This statement is entirely accurate for those with low incomes and insufficient financial means to purchase a house. Nowadays, many young people, especially those who have started families, often think that buying a house will stabilize their lives. There's nothing wrong with this thought, but buying a house when you are not financially ready can create pressure and burdens for your life. Don't rush to borrow money or use up all your savings to build a huge concrete block and then struggle to pay off the debt. Save the money you accumulate to invest and make it grow. It's okay to rent for now, or if you live nearby, you can stay with your parents for the first three to five years. When you have enough money, it won't be too late to buy a house. Only those who care too much about appearances desire a beautiful house when they lack the means. Rich people don't have that mindset. Remember, we become wealthy to improve our lives, not to show off or boast. Lesson number three, concerning eating habits. You often have the habit of drinking coffee in the morning, and you usually spend between 35,000 Vietnamese dongs and 70,000 Vietnamese dongs on this preference. Therefore, each month, you will spend about 1 million Vietnamese dongs to 2.1 million Vietnamese dongs. Instead, if you make coffee at home, you will only spend about 200,000 Vietnamese dongs to 300,000 Vietnamese dongs each month. In the afternoon, you often have an extra cup of milk tea or a cup of sweet soup, or some other snacks like cakes, chips, or soft drinks, costing you an additional 20,000 Vietnamese dongs to 70,000 Vietnamese dongs. This amount adds up to about 600,000 Vietnamese dongs to 2 million Vietnamese dongs per month. If you can cut this expense, you will save that amount each month and reduce your risk of obesity. You are an office worker and often have the habit of eating lunch outside, then going for coffee or shopping with friends. Each meal costs you between 70,000 Vietnamese dongs and 100,000 Vietnamese dongs, meaning you spend from 2 million Vietnamese dongs to 3 million Vietnamese dongs per month. This does not include dinner, if you also eat out, the amount you spend doubles, or even more if you dine at luxurious restaurants. That is, just for lunch outside, you spend about 2 million, for dinner, averaging for luxurious meals, about 3 to 4 million per month. This means that each month, you have to spend 5 to 7 million on eating out. It gets worse if you have a habit of going out and drinking with friends frequently, as the amount you have to spend will be even higher. However, if you take the time to cook at home, the amount you spend is only half, or even less. This method not only helps you save money but also ensures your health. There is a saying that I want to share with you. Do not waste a costly meal if no one sees it. It does not encourage showing off your status to anyone. It only shows that you are trying hard without any recognition, which is pointless. If you can spend a lot of money on eating out, reserve those meals for people who can help increase your income, like superiors or partners. Don't waste money on luxurious meals. Instead, spend time preparing meals at home, which will help you save costs and ensure your health. Yes, those were three cost-cutting methods to help you save money and move towards a wealthy, comfortable life. If you follow these three methods, I am confident that you will save a large amount of money each month and quickly become financially well off. Next are seven psychological tricks to help you save a fortune. Watch now if you want to become rich. Dear friends, if you have a job with a stable income but always find yourself broke at the end of the month, or if you've ever encountered some unfortunate events in your life and lacked the money to cover them, then this video is exactly for you. Therefore, saving money is very important. Saving money helps you have a strong financial foundation to face unexpected situations in life, making you more proactive in future financial plans, and giving you a better life. 
So today, we will learn about 7 psychological tricks to save money effectively. Let's get started. Tip number 1. Cash. This is a major issue that people often face nowadays. In recent years, people have preferred paying with bank cards whenever possible due to their speed and convenience. However, my first tip for saving money is to use cash as much as possible when you go out to eat, have fun, buy necessities, or purchase anything. Instead of using cards, try to pay with cash. Sometimes, cash transactions can create a bit of inconvenience for you, but it definitely helps you control how much money you are spending and how much you have left. Bank cards, especially credit cards, are extremely dangerous, especially for those who spend uncontrollably. You can swipe and swipe without thinking much, and by the time you realize it, it's too late, and you have already spent too much money. Tip number two, automatic deductions. This is an incredibly surprising tip because you can set it up so that you might not even realize money is being withdrawn. Almost everywhere you work offers the option to take a percentage or a specific amount from your paycheck and deposit it into a separate account. Do this and have the money sent directly to your savings account. As you know, with this account, you can't easily withdraw money from it. After many years, you become wealthy over time, and you'll have an amount you never imagined. Isn't that wonderful? Tip number three, tracking monthly expenses. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it, and this is absolutely true, especially with money. I started keeping track of my monthly expenses six months ago, and you'll be surprised when you see where your money goes. You'll start learning to manage your expenses right after reviewing your monthly report. At the top of the report is my income for the month, followed by expenditures. I divide expenses into three parts. First, essential expenses like rent, utilities, phone bills, and groceries, basically, the necessities. Next, non-essential expenses such as coffee, snacks, entertainment, birthdays, and clothing. The last part includes savings, investments, and debt repayment. After creating this report, I realized I spent too much on things like dining out and small items. In general, these expenses are not really necessary. When you look at this table, you will add up how much you have spent, and how much income you have earned. You will know whether last month you saved money or overspent, then balance and reduce unnecessary expenses. The most reasonable ratio, recommended by experts, is 50% of income for essential expenses, 30% for non-essential expenses, and 20% for savings and investments. Of course, you can adjust these ratios reasonably based on your income. Tip number 4. Avoid watching advertisements. This is a passive form, but you need to avoid dodging advertisements as much as possible. Avoiding them will help you minimize the likelihood of increasing impulse buying, restrict access to shopping websites, for example, definitely those items pinned at the top are always advertised very appealingly. Sometimes you can't resist and put them in your cart or the office at the checkout counter, it seems you'll get a big discount, with items introduced by staff, but in reality, they are not as many as you think, so avoid watching or listening to ads as much as possible, help you control your spending better, and when you can't avoid them, consider whether you really need those items. Tip number 5. Now or later. Have you ever noticed that there's a certain time of day when you feel like you're starving? Let me assure you, in just five minutes after drinking a full glass of cold water, you won't feel hungry like that anymore. This is a super simple trick to trick your brain into thinking how you really feel. It takes some self-discipline to be satisfied at a certain and appropriate level, and you can apply the theory of eating with money, rather than immediately buying a cool new phone. Wait a month later, and see if the item is still really necessary. 
Think carefully whether the new phone really helps your work more than the one you are using, or if it's just prettier and runs the market when you manage to limit the need for immediate shopping when you see an item, you won't imagine that you've saved yourself a lot of money. Trick number six, hourly pricing. It's a psychological trick, deceiving yourself by converting the cost of something into hours worked. For instance, to buy a $25 trillion shirt, you'd need to work continuously for five hours. Is this t-shirt worth that much effort, half an hour for a fried chicken meal, or overtime every weekend for a new gaming console? This conversion helps you better understand the value of what you're considering buying. More importantly, it helps you evaluate if the item is truly necessary and worth the effort you would put into earning it. Tip number seven, increase income instead of cutting expenses. If you want to save money for something, the best advice I can give you is to focus more on how to increase your income. Simply put, concentrate on finding ways to earn more money rather than cutting expenses. You might be surprised, but if you revisit your financial reports, you'll realize that earning extra each month is easier than eliminating necessary expenses like utilities, transportation, or food. While you can tighten your budget, it may not yield significant savings. Therefore, the best way to save more money is to enhance your income. I'm sure that beyond the typical 8-hour workday, you can put in a few extra hours to boost your earnings. If overtime isn't paid at your current job, consider seeking part-time work in the evenings and weekends or starting a side business in a field that suits you. Start by reading books or learning efficient money-making methods. As your mindset shifts and improves, it's a positive sign for your growth and self-worth. The wealthiest man in Babylon and the seven most effective wealth-building principles of all time. The wealthiest man in Babylon, these are simple short stories of the people of Babylon from thousands of years ago that still hold valuable insights. They aim to help people understand financial matters and offer guidance for those who ponder day and night about how to get rich. The secrets in the book not only help you understand the true value of money but also guide you in implementing sound financial principles in earning, saving, and multiplying wealth. Here are the seven best lessons distilled from this book, timeless principles of wealth that today's millionaires and billionaires apply especially if you're starting with little. Watch this video to learn them all. You just need to grasp one, and you'll be set. Lesson number one, always pay yourself first, at a rate of one out of ten. One of the greatest lessons, taught in the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, is this first lesson. When people sought advice from the richest man in Babylon, Arkad, he told them a story. Arkad was once a poor scribe who struck a deal with a wealthy man to uncover the secret to wealth by carving clay tablets. The wealthy man imparted a valuable piece of advice. I found the road to wealth, he said, when I decided to take a portion of all I earned and set it aside for myself. And you can do the same. Though a subtle message, it is crucial in the accumulation of wealth. We cannot accumulate wealth if we do not save a portion of what we earn by paying ourselves first before spending any money. If every morning you put 10 eggs into a basket and by the evening take out only 9, over time the basket will fill up with eggs. Thousands of years ago, people applied this incredibly effective formula and became exceedingly wealthy. Even 5,000 years later, no matter how the world changes, the secret of money and wealth remains the same, pay yourself first. Simply put, before paying any bills, buying anything, or spending on anything else, set aside an income for savings. The first bill you pay each month should be to yourself. Developing this habit early will lead you to immense wealth. Many people, upon receiving money, habitually think about paying debts, making purchases, or covering bills first, and only afterward consider saving what's left. This is the habit of 95% of the population, who
who hold 10% of the world's wealth. To join the remaining 5%, who hold 90% of the world's wealth, you must pay yourself first. John Templeton, who once had to drop out of college due to inability to pay tuition, committed early in life to saving 50% of all his earnings. He invested this saved money wisely and later became a billionaire. Eva was a vermicelli seller who became famous after amassing a fortune worth billions. Her secret lay in a formula. If one earned 8 dong, spent 3 dong, and saved 5 dong, or spent 5 dong and saved 3 dong, she would borrow an additional 2 dong to ensure she saved an even 10 dong. With this strategy, she used her money to purchase numerous plots of land in Tan Fu and Tan Bin districts of Ho Chi Minh City. Before passing away, she left behind a vast fortune for her descendants. Lesson number two, control your expenses. Managing your expenses is crucial. If we allocate at least 10% of our earnings for ourselves up front, we will have 90% of our income, or less, to live on. Controlling spending allows us to effectively utilize the remaining money. The best advice for becoming wealthy is to reduce expenses, even as our earning potential increases. Many of us tend to spend more as we earn more, so it's not surprising to see people overspending when their income rises. Efficient expense management means living below our income level, which accelerates wealth accumulation. Listing planned purchases beforehand and prioritizing essentials aligning with 90% of your income is crucial. Non-essential items should be confidently crossed off, recognizing them as countless other desires we cannot fulfill. Therefore, planning expenses now ensures meeting essential needs, enjoying life's pleasures, fulfilling legitimate desires, and ensuring a sufficient future livelihood. Lesson number three, taking money to work for you. Each of us should only consider investing after we have built up savings and an emergency fund. Once we have accumulated six to eight months worth of expenses in our emergency fund, we should then consider investing our money in other profitable investment vehicles such as stocks, real estate, bank savings, or starting our own business. Each dollar should be seen as a diligent worker for you, generating wealth that will benefit not only yourself but also your descendants, ensuring that your wealth continues to grow and your assets strengthen over time. Lesson number four, the secret of wealth preservation. Perhaps some of you here have experienced losing money due to poor business decisions or investments, or out of a sense of obligation to lend money to relatives or friends, only to lose both money and friendships. If you've been in such situations, please share below. When you have money, it's crucial to know how to carefully preserve it, as it can quickly slip away due to your temporary desires. First and foremost, we must learn to protect small amounts of money before handling larger sums. Before embarking on any venture, it's best to thoroughly research it and always remember that every decision demands safety for your capital. Don't let short-term desires cloud your judgment or succumb to the temptation of quick riches, as this poses a high risk. Another way to protect your assets is to ensure that anyone borrowing from you is capable of repayment. Consider their credibility, income, and job security to guarantee this. Similarly, when investing, assess potential risks and appropriate solutions. Protect and grow your assets by investing in safe and trustworthy opportunities with the highest possible returns. Seek advice from experienced individuals and trust their counsel to maximize profitability. Let their guidance shield your assets from the risk of misinvestment. This is the fifth lesson from The Richest Man in Babylon. Lesson number five, determination to own a home. A home can be the largest expense we have to pay. Many of us do not own a home and instead rent one, and there is nothing wrong with that. However, the lesson we can learn from this is that we should manage our largest expenses wisely. 
Instead of borrowing a large mortgage from a bank and struggling to pay interest, we should buy a home that we can comfortably afford. Lenders are often willing to help those who want to own a home and land of their own. You can borrow money or save up to buy or build a house. When that happens, your whole family will live in their own peaceful and joyful home. Your wives can grow more fruit trees and take care of the house. Your children will play in clean and safe places. Then, you can work with peace of mind to repay debts, whether it takes two years, four years, or even ten years. This work is like paying rent every month, but from here on, your life turns a new and better page because you own a valuable asset with all its rights and responsibilities. With a home, you can reduce some other miscellaneous expenses, leaving you with more surplus from your income to meet other needs and improve your standard of living. This is the fifth way to heal an empty wallet, determined to own a home. Only then can you start accumulating wealth and have better conditions for future investments. However, when buying a house, be cautious not to borrow excessively beyond your repayment capacity. If there are risks to future income, you'll face difficulties and stagnation. Also, avoid buying or building a house that's too large or unnecessary, or solely for impressing others. Buy a home that meets your needs and financial capability. When you have the means, you can buy a second or even a third home later on. The best way is to be able to raise capital from parents, relatives, acquaintances, and friends. This way, if there are risks, you can negotiate debt deferral. However, if you borrow with installment payments, when you miss payments, you will be fined according to the contract, and interest will generate more interest. At that point, you will be a slave to the house, which no longer becomes an asset but a liability, draining your strength and leaving you stuck in debt. Seek advice from financial experts and experienced individuals before deciding to buy a house. Lesson number six, ensuring long-term income. Typically, everyone's life goes through stages, from childhood to old age. Each person's responsibility is to prepare necessary assets for when they grow older. This preparation is not only for sustaining oneself in old age but also for potentially supporting family members when one is no longer able to work. We should have a retirement plan if we desire a comfortable retirement. By investing early in life, we can secure a better retirement. Starting early allows us to take advantage of compounding interest, a wonderful phenomenon. Lesson 7 enhancing income generation skills. The best way for us to increase our income is to invest in ourselves. We can do this by continuously learning and striving to develop ourselves. We are currently in an exciting era, the information age, where knowledge is truly at our fingertips, thanks to the internet. There are numerous online courses available, including many free ones. This is a great way to self-educate, whether we're learning about healthier eating habits, enhancing current job skills, or figuring out how to earn more money. We must proactively invest in ourselves. As we become smarter and wiser, our ability to earn more money also increases. Whatever our profession, we must always seek ways to improve ourselves and advance our skills. For artisans, this means learning new techniques and mastering new tools to refine their craft. For those in law or medicine, it involves consulting with colleagues to expand knowledge. And for entrepreneurs, it requires frequent travel to source the best goods and sell them at competitive prices. Earlier, we covered the seven best lessons from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. These principles, applied over 5,000 years ago, remain relevant and effective today. Which lesson impressed you the most? Please comment below. Until next time, goodbye and see you in the next videos. Summary of the book, Wishing You Success.